Hello and welcome to the building of the Flare SE5A. As you can see the wings are now almost ready uh, for covering. During the last week um, I've been busy, busy doing a lot of the fiddly work, getting them prepped for the, that job. However I need to say that um, last week I had to go in for an operation um, and on coming out, the advice was following a general anaesthetic. Uh, one shouldn't handle heavy machinery, sign legal documents. They should also say that one shouldn't attempt to do any model making. Uh, because what I did was instead of fitting the aileron servos into the lower wing, it's now been corrected, I quite happily installed them in the upper wing and it wasn't until I'd completed the task that I realised what I did but never mind it's now been corrected and um, the servo mounting lugs are all ready for installation that's just an extension lead that's been run through and um, ready for receiving the servos and um, I took quite a bit of time actually installing the lugs for the struts. Now, the, this follows the um, recommendations, which is using a, a retaining nut, which is soldered onto a metal plate and then screwed in. Now, I've gone with that simply because once this model's assembled, it won't be stripped down. It's small enough to easily fit into the car, so it'll remain like that. Anybody that's ever attempted to assemble a biplane with struts on the field with this method knows it's crazy. Uh, if you if you have to do that, I would recommend that you you look for a quicker release mechanism. And a good good approach that's been used is one by David Boddington. If you look up his designs, he uses a a, a loop in the bottom of the struts and a, a retaining pin that goes right through the wing. Uh, right through from the front strut to the rear strut. If you do that on the um, on the upper upper wing, you can't see it, and you retain it with a rubber band. It's far more convenient. But because this will remain rigged, and there'll also be uh, hooks for rigging wires uh, on the full uh, on the completed build, because this is staying comp in, in one piece, it's not really an issue. The other thing that I've done is I've actually. Um, hinged the aerolons and as I've always liked doing I like to actually cover the hinge line before I cover the whole plane and then I can make sure that the hinges are securely located and pinned before I move on so all's ready for covering and then once the covering's done I'll be able to add on to the upper level upper wing some added detail for um, the auxiliary tank which was located here there are also vent tubes that come from that tank which I'm going to model on um, I've also if one looks closely here I've got a mock-up of the pulleys which operated the aerolons they'll not be working but they'll simply be a mock-up but they will be visible um, through a perspex window as they are on the the tail. I think it's a nice added feature. So that's where we're up to. Um, despite the little hiccup of getting things the wrong way around, I feel like it's moving on. We're almost ready to, to commence covering and I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like when all that work's done. Bye for now.